looking for a quick and powerful visualization for your KNX projects. Need a server that doesn't just control KNX but also matter devices? What if it had its own app and worked seamlessly with Apple Home, Google Home, Amazon Alexa, Samsung Smart Things, and Home Assistant? It runs locally for maximum reliability but also supports remote configuration and secure TS access anytime, anywhere. And if that's not enough, it lets you set up local automations effortlessly. Want to learn all about this? Follow me and let's explore it together. One home server comes in this box. Let's unbox it. Inside the box, you will find a sticker with a matter pairing QR code, the local access URL for your server, and the server's username and password. This is the one home server. The server is designed for DIN rail mounting and requires four DIN rail units. On the top side, you will find the red-black KNX bus connector and the yellow-white auxiliary connector. The one home server requires a 12 to 30 volts DC power supply. On the bottom, there is an RJ45 LAN socket. On the front, you will find the status LED, a multifunctional red LED, a multifunctional button, currently not in use, and the reset button. The installation is straightforward. First, mount the one home server onto the DIN rail. Connect the KNX bus connector and the auxiliary connector. Here I'm using the additional 29V DC output from my KNX power supply. Finally, connect an RJ45 LAN cable from your local network. Everything's ready, so let's power it on. A solid green LED indicates that the software application is ready to use. To start the configuration, open a browser and enter onehome.local. The default username and password are provided on the included sticker. Select your preferred language. I'll choose English and accept the privacy policy. This is the One Home main dashboard. To start adding KNX devices, click Add Device. Select KNX and upload your ETS project file. Since my project is password protected, I'll enter the password here and click Start Detection. Depending on your KNX project, this process might take a minute or two. It's the only part that's not done locally. It runs on one home servers. Why? Because the system needs to analyze the group addresses to identify the actual devices. And since we all structure our ETS projects differently, this process requires more computing power. The detection is complete and here you can see the device automatically created by one home. My humidity and temperature sensors are correct with the right group addresses and assigned to the correct room. The pergola lights have the correct group addresses but are assigned to the wrong room, so I'll create a new one named pergola. The storage room lights also need a new room since they are actually located in the office. The pergola plug was correctly identified as a socket. I'll just need to assign it to the right room. Kitchen plugs and electrical kits and devices are fine. The bedroom plug just needs to be assigned to the bedroom. I'll do the same for the bathroom plug. The rest of the lights are fine. It correctly identified my living room ceiling lights as dimmable. However, there is a device with a long name that's actually a dimmable light, but it wasn't detected correctly, so I'll delete it and add it manually later. 
I'll also delete these two incorrectly detected devices. They are actually my AC unit. The last device is the LEGO lights, a dimmable light located in the kitchen. So far so good. One home did a great job detecting most devices. It only missed one dimmable light and my AC unit. There's nothing more to edit, so I'll click Submit. I'll also choose to help one home improve its detection algorithm, because the better it gets, the less work I will have in the future. Now, let's add the two missing devices by clicking on Add Device. The device type I need is a dimmable light, so I'll select it and click Create. I'll assign it to the kitchen and name it Kitchen Cabinets LED. Next, I need to fill the group addresses. There are two ways to do this. Check my ETS project and manually enter the group address. Or, use the search button to select it from the group address list. I'll do the same for the relevant group addresses for dimming control. Once everything is set, I'll click Create to add the light. The next device I will add is my AC unit, so I'll select Air Conditioner as the device type. I'll name it Kitchen AC Unit and assign it to the kitchen. In my case, the type is Heating and Cooling. The required group addresses are Room Temperature Status. Set point and set point status. HVAC mode and its status. Since my AC unit supports fan and dry mode, I'll enable them both. I'll also adjust the cooling and heating set points. Because my AC unit has a built-in fan, I'll select Continuous Fan Speed. For the fan off behavior, the fan speed will return to Auto. Finally, I'll select the group addresses for the fan speed and its status. Everything is set, so I'll click Create to add my AC unit. I have to say, the configuration options for the AC unit are some of the most complete I've ever seen. Besides the usual KNX devices, you can also add KNX scenes. The process is similar, just select KNX scene as the device type. The first scene I'll create is my living room bright scene. In this case, the scene type is scene number. I'll add the relevant group address and assign the scene number. Just a reminder, scene numbers range from 1 to 64. Similarly, I'll create an off scene a relax scene and a night scene. My scenes are ready. To complete my project, I'll add some sensors from my alarm system. For my door and window magnetic contacts, the device type is contact sensor. First, I'll add the contact for my main entrance and create a new room named alarm system to keep everything related to my alarm system organized. Since my door contact uses 0 for open and 1 for closed, I'll select the first option accordingly. Next, I'll add the relevant group address. I will repeat this process for the rest of my contact sensors. For my motion detectors, I'll select occupancy sensor as the device type. The only difference from contact sensor is that I'll choose PIR as the sensor type. Finally, I'll create one more motion detector. The final device I'll add for this project is a button to set my alarm to stay mode. To arm the alarm system in stay mode, it needs to send a known value to a specific group address. For this, I will use the pulse device type. I'll enter the name, assign it to the correct room, input the group address, 
and select one as the transmitted value. So far so good, but there's one issue I need to show you. To explain, I will use the ETS Group Monitor and the mobile app of my Satel Alarm System. As I mentioned earlier, if I send the Stay Arm Group address with the own value, the alarm system will switch to Stay Mode. Now I'll disarm it. You can see the Stay Arm and Disarm to be integrated with KNX are treated as alarm zones. For Disarm, I'm not concerned since I don't intend to disarm my alarm system through KNX. I only did it here for this demo. Here's the issue. When I send a non-value to stay arm, the relevant stay arm zone is opened, which actually prevents the alarm system from being armed again. So if I try to send the on-value again, nothing happens. To arm the system again, I first have to send an off-value to reset the stay arm zone. Now with the zone reset, I can successfully arm the system in stay mode. Let's go back to the one home dashboard. I created a pulse button that sends a non value, but I need to automate it so that after a few seconds, it also sends a no value to reset the zone. Luckily, there's a way to do this using automations. I was planning to make a separate tutorial about this, but I just can't resist showing it to you now. To create a new automation, simply click on Automations. I'll add a new one and name it Stay Arm Automation. As you can see, there is already a WEN block. To start, I'll click on the WEN button. I'll select the trigger type as device change. The device will be the Stay Arm Pulse button. I'll set it to trigger when the button is pressed, meaning when the group address is sent with a value on. Then I'll click Update and Save. Next, I'll click the plus button to add a new block. I need a delay, so I'll select a wait block. I'll set the wait time to 10 seconds and click Save. For the final step, I'll add an action block. The action is to write to KNX. I'll select the action to be sent through the twisted pair cable of the server. The group address will be the one assigned to stay arm. The group value type will be set to right and the value will be off. I'll click Update and Save. My automation is now ready. The last thing to do is enabled. Let's test if it works using the ATS Group Monitor. I'll send the Stay Arm group address with the value on. And as you can see after 10 seconds, the One Home server automatically sends a write command with the value off. That was just a small sample of what you can do with automations. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss my next tutorials. Now let's download the One Home app and check out how the visualization looks. From the App Store, search for One Home and download the One Home Smart Home app. Once it's installed, I'll open the app. Allow One Home to find device on your local network. Tap Get Started. Accept the terms of use and tap Confirm. Now it's time to connect the app to the server. Go back to the One Home dashboard and click on Mobile App. Click Add Home Owner to generate the QR code for the app. Back in the Mobile App, tap Scan QR Code and allow One Home to access your camera. Scan the QR code generated from the One Home dashboard. Tap Login. Give a name for your home and tap Continue. Enter your name and tap Done. You will notice that in the One Home dashboard, the homeowner's name is updated as well. And just like that, the One Home app is ready, showing all the KNX devices and configured in the One Home server.
And here's the best part. It also works remotely with no extra setup. To test this, I'll disable Wi-Fi on my iPhone and switch to 5G. As you can see, the app still works perfectly and I can control my devices remotely. There are more videos coming soon about the One Home server, but for now, I'll close this tutorial by adding my sticker to the device. Remember, when you find a similar sticker on a KNX device, it means there's a step-by-step -step tutorial waiting for you, for free, on YouTube. At this point, I'd like to thank the amazing members of Poseidon Tech who support my channel. Thank you guys, I really appreciate it. And of course, thank you all for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. If you find my tutorials helpful, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to stay updated with my upcoming tutorials. Until then, happy KNXing and I will see you in the next episode.